Hey, Melody. Um, this is your April video. Today we're listening to Start to Play and Echoes. So I'm going to read, start with Echoes. Echoes is an oldie. It's from late 2006. I'm pretty sure it's the best song I wrote that I no longer have the project file for. Oh, bummer. Well, I'm glad you have the, you know, the MP3. <clears throat> I wrote Echoes for a friend's birthday. She used the nickname Echo of Silence. Cool. Okay. Here we go. really cool. dark.
is one of the best sounding 303s in the history of all 303s. The way you mixed that shit, like, I, I can't imagine playing that 303 line for any human being in the world and them not going, oh my God, that sounded amazing. <laughs> like, like, you'd have to be an alien. And even then the aliens would love it. Um, there I I I I just don't know what to say. It's just like it's one of those things where I really like the rhythms. I like the the melody a lot. Like I love that you're like arpeggiating these chords and I'm like super into it. But even if you were playing absolute shit, even if just the sound alone of the 303 in this song is so good. <laughs> I'm like rattled. <laughs> I was just like, um, it's so bassy, you know, like I could, it was like, I felt it like in my whole body, but it also had so much texture and it was like way in the front and yet everything else existed around it. Like it, it, it wasn't, it wasn't drowning things out. I don't know how you did that. It was just like like I mean God, and then there was what part where it kind of I can't remember, but it kind of got like, it got especially like buzzy. And I was like, and then at the end here, filter. So anyway, I'm just, I'm, I'm a little bit out of a loss for words for the 303, but I'm just obsessed with it. And, <laughs> oh, but yeah, even, okay. So aside from just the sound of it, the way you mixed it, the way the, just the sound hits me um yeah i love i love the line it's just it's got a great like hook and um you got uh kind of it's hanging around c and then you go to flat six so i'm so into that and then you go up to four okay i was just down here i'm down here of course like that I think in most of my music I tend to just keep going down like but sometimes I forget you can you can go up an octave and get that big separation um but yeah so I'm just a huge fan of that progression and the way that you um you kind of hit the you hit the uh the four chord kind of at the very end so there was it was this feeling of like um yeah we're here like yeah it was like you almost didn't know if it was going to happen and then it, it just kind of sneaks in at the end i love that um so that that's just such a great like 
thing to carry us through this song, right? Because it goes through lots of changes with the drums, with the chords, um, different melodies come in, and yet that is consistent. And uh, so I am a huge fan. Um, these chords at the beginning were really uh, almost ominous, but then I heard, uh, sounds like maybe you sampled your own voice um, saying happy birthday. And I was like, this is, I bet you your friend love this. Like this, this would be the best birthday present. Someone wrote you a song like that is so cool. Um, so I'm sure that meant a lot to her, but yeah, I mean, you know, if you didn't, if I didn't know it was a birthday song, I would think like, oh man, this is like so dark. And so, um, I mean, it still is though, right? Like it, it, it's got, it's, it has a shroud about it, right? It's not like a lighthearted song, right? Uh, it's, it's, it's got meat, it's got weight, but the, the vocals were very ominous sounding to me and the chords at the beginning. Let's see. So you start out with this seventh chord, which I really like. Uh, even these, wow. Really nice. And then the vocals come in, it's like, oh, chills, you know? It's like, sounds very like otherworldly, you know? Yeah, definitely like aliens or like, uh, or creatures of the night. Okay, and then this chord, right? So then we have, uh... oh, it's a ninth chord, oh. quickly becoming or probably always has been one of my favorite chords and now I'm just you know recognizing the name of it but yeah that's a beautiful sound very lush and then that second chord though ooh, like It's either like a diminished chord or a minor chord, just... <laughs> okay, so... No. entirely sure but let's just assume it's that for now that relationship between the chords is kind of unusual so while i still think you have the c maybe so there's just like there's a lot of dissonance there um it gave me that it gave me the feeling of like two minor chords back to back that aren't related it, it, there's a certain sound um i've used it in my music it, you'll you'll hear it a lot in sample based music where they have a sample of a chord that's minor and then they pitch it up or down right so it just stays minor and you know minor chords are not often next to each other like that or i don't know it's always they've always they always get related to each other in like ways that like they wouldn't be in the same key that kind of feeling um but i know you're playing this so but i'm just saying it, it just reminds me of an era of electronic music where there's a lot of that so I, it feels nostalgic to me Or is it? 
Actually, now I'm wondering, are those all ninth chords, minor ninth chords? Because that, that one also sounds like a minor ninth chord, so. Like... I don't know. Uh... Wow, it's so hard for me to hear what's happening because the, 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 oh, it's still happening and they're conflicting. Okay, I think that's what it is. Okay, in which case? C minor, ninth. Then... Maybe, uh, maybe an E flat. No, I don't know. <laughs> Something. This chord or this chord? Either a G flat, seven something, something, or <laughs> E flat. Okay, and then. Oh, fuck. Did I forget now? I forgot it. I can't keep track. Okay, but those are cool. They're very lush, jazzy kind of chords. Um, okay, I'm gonna move forward a bit. God damn. That bass could kill somebody. Oh yeah, I like I love your syncopated kick here. It was totally unexpected. It was like I thought I was gonna get a four on the floor, and then I was like, uh, 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 which I love. <laughs> what did you do to this bass? <sighs> oh, okay. Yeah, just really creative percussion as usual. Uh, you know, not, nothing too straightforward. Not lots of cool accents. Um, a lot of cool reverb. I love it. <laughs> I like that kind of pad. Where did you what 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 has inspired you to do drums like this? Because 
feel like in a lot of your songs, you've got these really cool, like, like thuddy, almost more tribal sounding at times. Tom, more Tom heavy kind of like, I don't know, drums that like pan in really interesting ways. I, I can't really place like what that reminds me of. I'm really curious to hear from you about like, how did you come up with that? What, yeah, what were you listening to or did it just happen? Did it just, it's just divine. Uh, <laughs> But it's really, it's really cool. It's like, I really like it because I, I just really like syncopation, and it feels like it feels like you're marrying two types of grooves together. And I just really enjoy that feeling of like out of the bounds of genres. And yeah, and it's got a primal f feeling to it too. <laughs> I like I like this melody, this kind of bell like melody, and it was giving me like creepy vibes. And I figured it out. I think it's because you're writing this in harmonic minor, which um, it's it's almost like makes minor sound more evil, kind of. So. There's that like chromatic. <laughs> Like it, it sounds like your melody is doing a nice job of uh, taking into account the way your bass line's moving with like an implied chord progression, basically. And I just really like hearing the melody sort of change a little bit with when the chords hit. Um, I don't know if that was intentional or not, but it just feels like they're related. Like they feel like they're playing with each other. <laughs> Yeah, it felt like it almost kind of unraveled. That was kind of a cool feeling because things got really tight and, and uh, locked in, and then it just sort of slowly kind of became more um, disjointed. And that's cool. That's a really cool song. I really like the vibe of like the middle section. That was really my thing. Sweet. Well, happy birthday to your friend from 16 years ago. All right, the next track is um, Start to Play. It's a song you wrote after the Portishead listening party. Oh, wow, so this is very recent. You say it's inspired by Portishead a bit, one of the only songs in which I play a Rhodes. Cool. Other than that, I started by writing the first verse and cribbed the melody from What Else Is There by Royksop, who I really like. I don't know if I've heard that song, though. But once I had the majority of the arrangement down, I scrapped that and came up with one of my own. That's a cool way to go about it. That's very cool. Everyone watching, take note. And the two additional verses. Cool. All right. Start to play.
Oh, nice ending, leaving us on that unresolved chord. Um, okay, so we got to figure out this chord progression real quick. Definitely could hear um, the influence there. It's like a descending, has that like descending feeling. It's descending in a certain way, the way that like um, the Portis head progressions were, for sure. It's got, it gives you this almost like a spy movie feeling, but like, or like noir, I don't know. Um, and the drum groove, at least at first, definitely seemed more hip hop inspired than your usual um, style. Yeah, that chord. Okay, so, yeah. And then you just feel it naturally wanting to go. Or something, see what you do. So that's cool. You kind of like kept the top notes the same and just kind of. Yeah. I like that. ended up being really cool with your melody i liked that feeling that rise it was kind of unexpected Let's see what is it what is it Okay, so. Oh, okay. That chord, that's a D major chord, sounds like. That is a secondary dominant. It's a chord that, I mean, not in all songs, but I think in your song, maybe it sets up another chord, um, but it the chord itself, the D major chord doesn't belong. So it has that, like, I don't know, it just has a, a certain feeling to it. So. Right, like, you, makes us want to go to G minor. Let's see what happens. And you did! You went to G minor. So you instinctively knew that this wants to go there. Cool. And then went to G major, which is the dominant chord of C. But then you did a deception and you had a, a flat six, flat seven, and then went to one. That's cool. That's actually quite a long progression, but your it sounded really nice with your melody. Um, That's pretty, that's a, that's a mega progression. <gasps> Man, how many chords is that? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 
13, 14, 15 chords. I'm going to give you the award. How to use 15 chords. That's cool. Um, yeah, I mean, it definitely sounds a little different, like, than, than what I usually hear from you. Um, just this sound, right? How was that? How was that working with that? Because I recently tried something similar and it was kind of, it was fun, but it was like, I wasn't inspired to like write anything with it. It was just like, okay, I made a chord progression that does that thing and now I'm done. <laughs> uh, but you, yeah, you made a whole song, you made it work. All right, I'm gonna have to uh, wrap this up, but um, thank you for sharing your April songs, Melody. And see you maybe next time. <laughs> All right. Bye.